Hi, Hugh's asked me to give a brief summary of the plenary that I gave at IATEFL in Glasgow in April of this year. Um, I talked about the importance of psychology for language learning and teaching. Um, I don't suppose this is anything new, really. Um, it's maybe just a question of bringing us back to basics, reminding us of the importance of people in language learning and teaching. We can have the best materials, the best resources, the best facilities, but if we don't have the right kinds of relationships, learning and teaching is going to be a lot more difficult. Um, when I was preparing the plenary, I was trying to focus on just a few, three key things to focus on in a 50 minute plenary. And I was struggling what to focus on, but I chose three things. The first is the importance of positive relationships. The second is the importance of positivity and growth. And the final thing I talked about is the importance of nurturing um, teacher professional well-being. I'll just talk about all three of those briefly now. Um, relationships are one of the most influential factors in teaching for the learner. So the relationship that a learner has with the teacher, the rapport that they build up is very important for how willing they are to engage in the classrooms, how confident they feel, how comfortable they feel in the classroom. And there's much that we can do in terms of developing our own social emotional competences to develop those relationships with our learners and work on investing in those relationships. But it's not just the relationship between teacher and learner that's important, but also amongst the learners, taking time to work on collaborative working structures, but also looking at the relationships as teachers that we have with colleagues, with our bosses, um, with parents. Investing in the relational network that we find ourselves in in the workplace is hugely important to our well-being, but also for our ability to teach well. The second thing that I focused on was positivity and growth. Um, I'll focus on the second part first. By growth, I mean the idea that we all believe that we can get better, that we can improve on where we are now. There's a, a concept called mindset that some of you may be familiar with, and which I've talked about and, and my colleague has talked about also on Hugh's website. Mindsets refer to whether we believe that an ability or a trait that we have is something that can be developed, something that is malleable, or if we believe that it is something that is fixed, it cannot be changed. Fundamentally, as teachers, we have to believe in the ability of everybody to improve. And that applies to ourselves as teachers as much as it does to our learners and their ability to improve in, in, in their language abilities. It doesn't mean that everybody will find it equally easy or that they'll all reach the same level of ability, but it does mean that we can all improve on where we are now, whether that's as a learner or as a teacher. The second part of that was talking about positivity. Um, as teachers, it might just be me, but as teachers we do have a tendency to focus on the negativity, the what's wrong, um, where are the weaknesses, what's deficient, how can we improve on that? And that will always be an important part of teaching is identifying those weak spots and how to improve on those. But also we find um, in the positive psychology movement there's a lot more focus now on also how we can benefit from drawing on our strengths knowing what we're good at, knowing how we can integrate that into our workplace or in our learning and how we can build on those strengths. Um, and that applies, again, as much to teachers as it does to learners, helping learners find their strengths and bring that into their learning. And also for teachers to build on their strengths and bring their strengths into how they teach and how they approach their workplace. Um, and positive emotions generally also have what we call a broadening effect. They help us to be more creative, to think of different options, to think more positively. Um, and positive emotions are, my friend Peter McIntyre says, they're not the tee heave. It's not just those kind of emotions that are positive, but there are sort of emotions like contentment, um, finding meaning, hope, optimism, these kinds of things, resilience. And fostering those kinds of positive emotions can be very effective and very important for learning, particularly for learning a language which is such a long-term commitment. The final thing I spoke about at IATEFL was perhaps one of the most important things I spoke about is the importance of nurturing language teacher professional well-being. Um, for a whole variety of reasons, research in the field generally has tended to focus on the learner and that's always going to be the key focus for us. These are the people that we're there to help, that's why we have the job we have. But if as teachers we're not in the right place mentally to support our learners, then we're not going to be able to teach to the best of our abilities. So looking after teacher professional well-being is not an optional extra. It's not something we should feel guilty about. It actually helps us to be better teachers. 
So in my view, we need to be making this more of a priority, both in research, but also putting it really on the agenda to talk about that how can we support teachers? What do teachers, what are their needs? What are their psychological um, motivations, emotions, um, stressors? How can we help support teachers? And a perhaps an important point to make about this is I've been talking about this very much in terms of what this means for individual teachers and how they can help themselves look after their professional well-being. But this is something that needs to be paid attention to by directors of studies, heads of school, um, policy makers, administrations, institutions. It's something that needs to be happening on a systematic level. It should not just be left to be the responsibility of the individual teacher. So in sum, um, I hope I've been able to draw attention to the importance of psychology fundamentally for language learning and teaching, um, the importance of relationships for teachers and learners, um, the importance of focusing on positives and fostering a sense of growth, and the importance of nurturing and supporting teachers in their professional roles, ensuring that they have positive, strong well-being. Thank you.